All right, my name is uh, Scarlett Hiller, and I'd like to welcome you all to joining our Thursday night travel talks. Tonight we have the Senior Director of Expedition Sales, Rachel Woodward from Silver Sea Cruises, welcome. And um, we're here, um, there are five Edmonton location offices that are participating in these travel talks. We have them once a, once a week, so every Thursday. And uh, we enjoy having you all share your part of your evening with us. These talks will hopefully provide you thoughts and ideas for future travel when it is safe to do so. For those that have not attended a Zoom meeting, everybody is muted. Um, we encourage you to use the chat feature to uh, ask any questions and we will deal with those questions at the end of Rachel's presentation. Uh, you have control of your video. So if uh, you'd like to show, show us your beautiful faces, please do so. Um, otherwise, you, you have the, your control to turn the video off. Um, 2021 is uh, hopefully gonna be the start of traveling again. Uh, many people are starting to book, or some are still dreaming, and, and hopefully will book soon. Um, and planning their next vacation for 2022, 2023, and sales. I know I heard, uh, I was on a seminar with Silver Seas uh, earlier today, and they are having record months in booking. So people are booking for future travel. So tonight, Rachel will give us lots of motivation and, and teach us all about her wonderful product in the Galapagos, Antarctica, and all of those expedition cruises. So I welcome you, Rachel, and the floor is yours. Well, thank you so much, Scarlett. And I want to thank Expedia Cruises for organizing a fabulous event. And I also want to thank Expedia Cruises for a wonderful partnership. I know the past year has been quite challenging for all um, due to the current circumstances with COVID and travel, but um, we are seeing record breaking booking months the past couple months. So if you do have any interest with Silver Sea Cruises, please reach out to your Expedia Cruises advisor and they can work with you on a future trip. Um, as Scarlett mentioned, I'm Rachel Woodward. I'm based in Los Angeles. I oversee Silver Sea Expedition Sales for North America. And I've been on quite a few of Silver Sea's expedition voyages. So tonight I really just want to share with everyone um, some inspirational photos and why expedition travel is so unique and why expedition travel now is the hottest um, way to cruise. What river cruising was 10 years ago is what we're seeing with a demand for expedition cruising. I love this photo here, a collage of, of different destinations we visit over 570 worldwide destinations. The only destination we're year round is the Galapagos. So from pole to pole, Antarctica to the Arctic, really remote places, Russian Far East, um, as well as the Kimberleys in Australia. Uh, the most popular question I get with expedition travel is how active do I need to go on an expedition voyage? Do I need to expect to go on a six mile hike every day? No, I always say, if you can climb a flight of stairs, play a round of golf, you can go on an expedition voyage. We cater to all different activity levels. We always offer Zodiac cruising. So the great thing is with expedition cruising, there's small vessels, anywhere from 100 to 240 passengers. So a different way to travel. And from there, you will board a Zodiac, like that middle photo at the top in Antarctica. So these Zodiacs are very rugged, maneuverable, and we're able to take you to remote places because of these Zodiacs. So we'll offer Zodiac cruising, short walks on a beach, um, kayaking in Galapagos, in Antarctica, in the Arctic, and then short hikes. So all excursions are included with Silver Sea. Um, showing a photo here of the Zodiacs. This was in um, the Kimberleys in Australia, where you can see the tidal change at Montgomery Reef at six in the morning. Um, and if it wasn't, you know, if you weren't on these Zodiacs, you wouldn't have these up close um, encounters. This photo was taken on my Arctic trip visiting Svalbard to see polar bears two summers ago. And we visited this area 
uh, called Bear Island. You would think you would see polar bears here, but actually it's these, um, these stunning cliffs. They say it's like Jurassic Park of the Arctic. Um, and you'll see not just hundreds, but thousands of puffins everywhere. And the only way you can get through these little inlets is, is on these zodiacs. Uh, cultural experiences too. So it's not just about the wildlife, but uh, remote places we'll visit in the Russian Far East, the Tilnap village, they'll show us how they um, cook and clean their salmon. In Greenland, we'll, we'll meet some Inuit communities, um, local school kids. So it's really unique. Um, I say too with expedition cruising, it's not so much a live entertainment on board and, and we don't have any casinos on board. It's about the educational aspects. So the expedition team always tries to incorporate that throughout the voyage. The three polar vessels we have in the fleet. So tonight we're highlighting Antarctica and the Galapagos. So I'll start off tonight with Antarctica. Um, we have Silver Explorer, Silver Cloud, and Silver Wind. They all have ice strengthened hulls, uh, dynamic stabilizers. Um, so it makes it comfortable, especially when you're crossing the Drake Passage heading to Antarctica. But the biggest thing I point out with expedition cruising, um, whether or not you're looking at Silver Sea or another expedition company, look at the number of guests that are on board. Because visiting certain destinations like Antarctica, you can only have 100 guests ashore. So with Silver Sea, we're able to offer um, two landings a day, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and then we rotate groups. So that's a really big thing to look at, as well as the expedition team, because you always want to have more guides on board for smaller groups ashore. So what makes Antarctica so special. I always like to lead with our expedition team. We started our expedition um, product in 2008, so over 13 years of expedition cruising, and we have up to 28 guides. So for 240 guests, 28 guides, that's about eight to 10 guests in a Zodiac. I had many days where there was only five to six of us in a Zodiac. Um, marine biologists, historians, botanists, uh, in the middle bottom photo, uh, the lady um, driving the Zodiac in Antarctica, Robin Aiello, she's been with Silver Sea since 2008, graduated from Harvard University, a marine biologist, has been to Antarctica, I think, 112 times. And they sign up for Antarctica every year. They're so passionate. So um, if you haven't been to Antarctica, I really recommend to consider it, especially to check off that seventh continent, likely the farthest away from home that you've ever been. Only about 50,000 people visit Antarctica each year. So it, it really is a magical destination and no voyage is similar. If you've been to Antarctica before and you wanna go in a couple of years, the wildlife and what you see is gonna be a different experience. So we offer four different types of voyages for Antarctica. Um, before I talk about the itineraries itself, I do wanna mention we make it quite easy for you to get to this destination. Uh, so. For everyone flying from Canada, Silver Sea does include complimentary international air to Santiago, Chile. And then we'll include a pre-night hotel in Santiago, and then the following morning, a chartered flight to Ushuaia. Or we offer reduced business class air international. So we're the most all-inclusive cruise line with everything we include with the airfare. On board, we include gratuities, alcohol. You have your own private butler, which I like to say um, is just like having a concierge. So the main itinerary for Antarctica, the peninsula trip um, on the second to the left, they're about 10 to 12 days in length. All Antarctica voyages operate round trip Ushuaia with the exception of our bridge program, which I'll mention in a bit. So if you're looking at for the first time, you haven't been to Antarctica, you don't want to go on the 18-day voyage yet. I would consider the Peninsula Cruise 10 days in length. It will spend six days exploring the peninsula. You'll see three different penguin species, the Gen 2, the Chinstrap, and the Adelie penguin. Something new that we've never offered before, a deep Antarctica voyage. So if you are a bucket lister, you want to have bragging rights, we're able to take the vessel um, ice cruising 66 degrees south on this itinerary. So that's really unique. And then our 18 day voyage on the far right combines the peninsula, the Falklands and South Georgia. So if you have the time, I highly recommend the 18 day voyage because you'll see seven different um, penguin species, including the king penguin. So what is this bridge program? So we're calling it our Antarctica Fly Cruise Bridge Program. If any of you are concerned with the Drake Passage uh, or you don't have time for a two to three week holiday, 
This is a six day trip and it avoids the Drake Passage. So we operate the program from Punta Arenas, Chile, and then we offer the following morning a chartered flight down to Antarctica. Um, we land at a, um, a research base, uh, King George Island. And from there, you'll be in your expedition gear with your parka on, you'll walk ashore about a fourth of a mile and board a Zodiac in Antarctica. So it's a shorter trip, you avoid the Drake Passage. But I say, if you haven't been to Antarctica yet, the thrill and adventure is crossing the Drake Passage. It's just to say bragging rights. Um, nine out of 10 times, it's like the Drake Lake, but sometimes you will feel um, a bit movement there. So what I want to do really is just inspire you with this destination, share some images from my trip to Antarctica. Um, so this is all just images and I'll review some of the activities we offer. Silver Sea has a lot of outdoor deck space. So that's really important to visiting the White Continent. Most days it's quite sunny. Um, it's likely colder in Edmonton in the winter than it is in Antarctica. I say that too sometimes with um, clients from Chicago. Uh, we do include the red parkas, a backpack and a water bottle, but it's uh, what you'll wear for an Antarctica voyage is like um, dressing for a ski trip. So I'm sure many of you, you have all of that gear for an Antarctica trip. But the deck space is really important um, because you'll be at the front of the vessel, great photo opportunities, Many days it's sunny, sunny, you'll take photos of humpback whales and orcas out on deck. And the expedition team on board is always on there to um, show you how to maybe take the best photos, interact with you, the host lunches and dinners. So this photo here was taken on my trip to Antarctica three seasons ago. I was on Silver Cloud and we were in a Zodiac group, probably about six to eight guests. Um, as soon as you are going to shore, you're probably about a mile away from the shoreline. And there's always at least one or two expedition guides in your Zodiac group. Your first steps ashore, not only are you going to see hundreds of penguins, but thousands. Most landing sites have between three to 6,000 penguins. It's unbelievable. Uh, a lot of snow and a lot of ice. So we visit Antarctica from November until the end of February. So it's definitely a seasonal destination compared to the Galapagos where we're there year round. There isn't a bad time to visit Antarctica during that season. November through mid-December, there's more snow and more ice. It's a little bit more pristine. So for those of you that are avid photographers, a great time to take photos. Um, and why I say pristine is because baby penguins are born at the end of December. So you can imagine walking ashore in January, you might get a little bit more um, penguin poo ashore, but of course we have, um, you wear the, the boots and we have a boot cleaning station on board. Um, but if you do wanna see baby penguins, end of December into January is, is a great time. Um, another great photo here, this is in South Georgia. So the, um, the geology, the landscape is very different between Antarctica in the peninsula than South Georgia. South Georgia, you get these rolling green hills and you'll see 50,000 king penguins, actually 55,000 king penguins at Salisbury Plain, as far as the eye can see. And you can see the penguins that are furry brown. Those are the baby penguins. This was probably taken um, the first week in February when they're a little bit more uh, larger, but it's just so cute. Um, I always say too, you know, many times, the wildlife has no fear of humans. And, and that really is what makes visiting Antarctica and Galapagos so special. Uh, if you just put your camera away, you sit down and admire the scenery, more than likely you'll probably have a penguin walk up to you. Now we always say to stay close distance because we always protect the wildlife five to 10 feet, but it's unbelievable how close you get to the wildlife. Um, I love this photo too. This is in South Georgia. Um, four different guests taking photos of the elephant seals. And I'm one of those guests that was using my iPhone because uh, I had my large camera and then I just started taking stuff on my iPhone. But you're so close to the wildlife, you can take some really good photos. You'd be surprised on your iPhone. So when you head down to the peninsula, the scenery changes a, a lot. So South Georgia is just outside the Antarctic Peninsula, but you'll visit South Georgia on the 18-day voyage. So in the peninsula, um, I was blown away. I knew I would see a lot of penguins, but it was the ice, the colors of the ice. 85% uh, of the world's ice is in Antarctica and 90% of the icebergs are below the surface level. So, you know, looking at this photo here, imagine how small you feel on these zodiacs. Um, many days, 
I zodiac cruising. I just put my camera away and I observed the scenery. It's it's unbelievable. There's no sounds other than you know you might see some humpback whales bubble feeding and some penguins ashore, but it's stunning. This particular day, I was on the zodiac right next to the photographer, so I can't take credit for this photo. Uh, but there's five of us in a zodiac group. We visited this area called Sierra of the Cove, which is known to see humpback whales bubble feeding. There was five humpback whales near us for an hour and a half. Our expedition guide said, everyone put their cameras away. He turned off the engines and we had a humpback whale right next to our zodiac. Now, I know that might sound scary, but um, they're just very curious and playful. And it was a memory that I will never forget. And that's why you travel. You, you know, you enrich yourself with these, um, these memories that last a lifetime. Another photo of the humpback whales. So for those of you that do like to stretch your legs a bit and, and go on um, a mile or two hike, uh, that's something that Antarctica does offer, stunning scenery views. This is in Nico Harbor. This particular day, um, I, I brought my mom on the trip. She's about 74. We went ashore in the Zodiac together. And then she said, I don't want to go on this hike. So I went up the hike about two miles. And then she just walked to the first penguin colony ashore. So we always catered to different activity um, levels, which is great. But these are just some photos here of, of hiking. Kayaking is also um, included. I will say it's a little different kayaking in frigid waters and it is kayaking in Vancouver, Canada, which, which I love doing. But it's an experience and it's just bragging rights to say you got to kayak in Antarctica. So we have eight double kayaks on board. We'll provide complimentary wetsuits for you to use throughout the voyage. Some of the wildlife that you'll get to photograph, um, photograph fur seals, um, orcas, you'll see these spotted sea lions ashore. And my favorite is um, these tabular icebergs. It's just stunning. I mean, looking at the inside of this, the teal, um, how dark it is when you look below the surface level, it's just stunning. And of course, I always say, for the thrill and the adventure, pack your bathing suit because you will um, have the rest of the, uh, the guests on board and crew cheer you on to do the polar plunge. So we will provide a certificate for you. Um, and it's just something fun to do. They will provide a cocktail or a warm beverage afterwards. And then we have two hot tubs on board so you can jump into the hot tub afterwards. So that's an overview of Antarctica. Um, Expedia Cruises, do you have any questions? I don't know if there was anything in the chat box about Antarctica. If not, I'll, I'll jump into Galapagos. Hi, Rachel, there is a few questions. So we'll, we'll get those answered. Um, the first one, how fast do the zodiacs go? Great question. Um, I would say about five to ten miles an hour. Um, not that fast because we always usually we're observing wildlife. So they try to go somewhat slow, but um, it definitely is comfortable ride. Sometimes when the wind picks up is where you can feel it a bit more choppy. But I would say it's probably about five miles an hour that, that the Zodiacs go. Okay. The next question, uh, what is the average temperature when traveling to Antarctica? Great question. I'm gonna say it in Fahrenheit, so you, you guys have to convert it to Celsius. Uh, around, I would say 20 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. So am I, am I right that it's probably colder in Edmonton in the winter than it is in Antarctica? It can be for <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. I mean, from Los Angeles, I, I really can't compare weather. I mean, I was cold there, but I'm just used to it always being warm. <laughs> and I don't have the conversion. So if, if anybody can step in on what that converts to our, our uh, temperature here, please uh, send, send it in the chat. Uh, the next question is, what is the average wave height when traveling from South America to Antarctica? A uh, great question. So, Crossing the Drake Passage, that's from South America down to the peninsula. Uh, that area of the, uh, the waters is known as one of the roughest seas in the world. So you can get, um, you know, waves that are anywhere from 15 to 30 feet. Um, but the great thing is with our vessels, they're quite fast. So the evening prior when we we're going to leave um, Ushuaia, they uh, the captain and expedition leaders saw that there was a storm hitting. So we delayed leaving until the following morning. We were able to increase um, 
the knots. Usually we go about 12 knots. We increased it to about 18 knots and we got down to the peninsula in 30 hours. So nine out of 10 times, it's the Drake Lake. I wouldn't worry too much about uh, the ship moving because the ship does have stabilizers on board and it's a larger vessel too. So of course, comfort and safety is most important thing. Perfect. Um, a comment from Anne. When I went around the tip of South America, it was beautifully calm. So thank you for that. Uh, Dave asks, what is the average temperature in November, December? Is it, is it better than compared to the rest of the year? Great question. The temperature from November through end of February is the same. That is their summer months. So that's the only time you can visit Antarctica. All expedition cruise ships are only there from November through February. You will see some discounted um, Antarctica voyages in March, which I would not recommend because a lot of the penguins um, as well as wildlife are gone by then. But um, November through February is probably similar with uh, air temperature between 20 and 40 degrees. And then you're there at the prime time with um, mating season to see the penguin eggs, when the penguins are born at the end of the season to see humpback whales and orcas, um, spotted sea lions. So it, it's really the prime season. I would just say pick a voyage that works best for your travel schedule. Great, thank you for that. And Heike, thank you. She, she converted the temperature and she said the average temperature is about minus seven to four degrees uh, to the positive side. So, th so thank you for that. So that's all the questions we have so far. So uh, I will, right. I will carry on with the Galapagos. Great, great. Well, thank you all. I, I appreciate your time tonight. I, I hope this provides a little excitement with travel. I, I cannot wait to get back um, on the road. And actually, I think the first destination that I will visit is likely the Galapagos. Um, we should know next week, uh, right now, Silver Sea has announced our return to service for a classic vessel, Silver Moon, in Greece this summer. Uh, more than likely, the second destination will be the Galapagos. We just have to get the crew vaccinated. So we should know more over the next month, but we're looking at likely a launch date in July. Um, this is a brand new vessel. This is a first ever brand new ship um, on the expedition side for Silver Sea. And I love this image here. It looks like a mega yacht, um, 100 passengers, and 86 crew. And that's one thing you'll always notice with the crew to guest ratio, almost a one-to-one, -one, which is unheard of. Um, the ship has a dynamic positioning system, so she never has to drop anchor, so she's able to protect the seafloor. So that's really important visiting the islands. Um, the islands are all protected by the Galapagos National Park. Uh, there's no human civilization in the uh, Galapagos Islands, so it's all just wildlife. A lot of history with Charles Darwin, um, and his theory on um, evolution, so it is quite exciting. So I'm gonna click through some photos here of the vessel itself. Uh, this is the marina deck platform, so on the left-hand side near the Zodiac. Uh, so we, we make it quite easy to get in and out of the Zodiac. Um, you can see here, you just take a couple steps into the Zodiac. We've had guests that have knee hip problems. Our expedition team, they use the sailor grip to get you in, so we can accommodate um, everyone. This is when you walk on board, we've, we're calling it our base camp. So a lot of Galapagos artifacts displayed throughout the vessel, very modern and contemporary, a lot of natural light displayed throughout the vessel. We have this um, interactive digital wall where our expedition team can um, review wildlife. They can show you what tomorrow's activities will be. Uh, we can play videos about the islands we're visiting so you know exactly what you need to wear. One big difference though with Antarctica and the, and the Galapagos, Antarctica, Every landing will be a wet landing. You will always need to wear the rubber insulated boots. I highly recommend that you rent the boots, whether or not you're on a Silver Sea voyage or another expedition cruise line voyage, because the boots are quite heavy, about five pounds, and there's limits with the charter flight, um, how heavy your suitcase can be. So rent the boots. The boots for Antarctica will be in your suite, which is great. And then when you're finished with your voyage, you just leave them there. Galapagos, the landings can be wet or dry landing. So a wet landing, you'll probably just wear, you know, water sandals. A dry landing, you can just wear a pair of tennis shoes. You don't really need heavy hiking shoes. Uh, this is deck seven. So we have a really nice lounge area. We also have for our dining choices for the Galapagos, a main restaurant, and then we have an outside grill. This is a photo of the Superior Veranda. 
which is beautiful. It reminds me somewhat of a, a Ritz Carlton. Uh, so we have this horizon balcony concept in some of the veranda suites. So there, uh, you can move that, I would say your outside deck space into your suite. So the entry veranda start at 320 square feet and our largest suite goes up to 1700 square feet. We have the largest suites in the Galapagos. So any of you that are looking at maybe bringing um, families, we do see a lot of multi-gen families traveling over the Galapagos, grandparents, the children, and then the grandkids. Children for the Galapagos just have to be five years or older. Uh, that actually has to do with any expedition voyage um, and really with being in and out of a Zodiac. But this is a great destination uh, for children and families because of the wildlife. So the two itineraries that we offer, they rotate every seven days. Um, San Cristobal to Baltra, Baltra to San Cristobal. Silver Sea includes a two-night Cree hotel stay in um, Quito. And then post-cruise will include a post-cruise uh, day room hotel in Guayaquil. So depending on your flight schedule, I would assume you would probably have to connect through Miami. Um, coming from Los Angeles, I had a flight from Los Angeles to Miami, Miami to Quito. I got in on Thursday afternoon and then two pre-nights in Quito. So the one nice thing with Silver Sea on our expedition product, we'll always include that pre-night hotel and always include a post-cruise day room. So work with your Expedia Cruises advisor on um, the land side of things. So I wanna get into the itinerary and what makes this destination so unique. It's definitely a marine sanctuary. Every island is so unique. Um, this is in Santiago Island. It's a volcanic island, so you're noticing just uh, walking ashore how it's a little bit more rugged. Um, I would say too with the Galapagos, not every day is it going to be white sand beaches. You will notice that it's a little bit more rocky, um, uneven terrain, but it's absolutely beautiful. And anytime we might offer a longer walk, a longer hike, that could be that could start as early as eight in the morning. Um, we'll always offer a shorter beachcombing walk. And why I mentioned that the activities start a little earlier in the Galapagos, the islands uh, straddle the equator. So they're about 640 miles from the um, South American mainland. So it is very hot and humid there. So the hottest time of the day is midday. We try to have the excursions quite early in the morning. You're back on board around 11 to two, and then late afternoon, you'll have your second excursion. Antarctica, um, is paced a little differently. You have a couple sea days because of the Drake Passage. Galapagos is a seven day voyage. Every morning, every afternoon, you're visiting a different island. So no sea days, a little bit more fast paced um, schedule. But I do recommend if you haven't been to Machu Picchu, look at adding Machu Picchu as a pre-cruise for your Galapagos trip. So work with your advisor on that. Um, walking ashore, you're gonna see blue-footed boobies, even walking along the beach. And again, they're so curious you're gonna be within five to 10 feet of the blue footed boobies. Um, red footed boobies, you'll also see uh, the Nazca boobies, the flightless cormorants where their wingspan is six feet wide. It's unbelievable. Um, and then you'll also see penguins. So these are the only penguins that you'll see in the um, South American area other than Antarctica. So uh, you'll see, let's see, and thinking of the islands you'll see, but you'll be able to snorkel with penguins, sea turtles, um, sea lions. I had white tip um, reef shark snorkeling, also a manta ray. So it's unbelievable. We visit, um, if you ever Google or you, you read like a travel and leisure magazine about some highlights with the Galapagos, they always mention Fernandina and Isabella Islands. So that's where you'll see uh, the sea turtles and the penguins. We visit them on both itineraries. We're the only expedition operator in the Galapagos that does. So pick either or itinerary, just the one that works best for your travel schedule. You also see the Galapagos uh, Mockingbird. That's where Charles Darwin began his theory on evolution. Uh, you also see the short-eared owl. So if you are an avid birder, there's over 35 different bird species you can see. My favorite, I was there end of October which is during mating season of the frigate bird. So the male inflates his chest. And this was a photo taken on my iPhone because I was within five feet of this. It was unbelievable. Um, again, with it being a year round destination, if you go in November, February, April, or August, it's a great time of year to visit. So there isn't 
other than if there's specific things you want to see with wildlife that's nesting, um, there isn't a bad time to visit. The January through March is known as the rainy season, but you really only have rain if when you go in the highlands to see the giant tortoises. The water temperature is a little warmer January through March. It's probably about 70 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And then the fall has the Humboldt current. So the water temperature is a bit colder in the fall. Um, we provide wetsuits, so you'll wear a wetsuit and I was fine. It just reminded me, I mean, I live in Los Angeles, so I know the water temperature is much warmer than up in uh, the Canadian area. So I'm sure you'll be fine snorkeling. Uh, you also, as soon as you step foot ashore, this is a wet landing. So the zodiacs can come right along the beach. You just swing your legs around, wearing your water sandals, and you'll see sea turtles nesting. Um, photography as well. The amount of sea lions you see, how curious the sea lions are, they'll come right up to your mask. Even the penguins, they'll just swim right past you. So you have your morning activity and you're back on board midday and then Silver Origin will um, head to another island, which will probably go ashore about 4 p.m. We'll offer lunch either indoors or outside, very casual, no formal evenings. Most um, guests are wearing a pair of jeans, expedition gear. It's like packing and dressing for a safari. Uh, so it's very casual atmosphere. One thing to note that's different too about the Galapagos. Um, so it's very protected by the Galapagos National Park. All the crew on board is Ecuadorian and they are very passionate about the islands. Their parents were Galapagos guides. Their grandparents were Galapagos guides. Many of them have PhDs and masters. It's really unbelievable. Uh, the water activities, if any of you love to snorkel, we do not offer diving. But uh, we do have a, a snorkeling program and the snorkeling is, is great. Water activities with the amount of fish you'll see. Um, this is a photo from my trip with the manta ray that was swimming underneath me for about seven minutes. Um, snorkeling with penguins, with sea lions, having your GoPro. Uh, we do have a photographer on board. So the great thing is after the voyage, they'll provide a USB of their top images and videos and share that with you. Um, but every day is different. You notice with the wildlife, the scenery. This is um, walking along. It's called Bartolome Island. It's about 377 steps um, and a gradual walk to the top. But once you get to the top, the view here is stunning. On the far right hand side, there's a rock you'll see that's pointed straight up. That's called Kicker Rock. This is the most iconic photo of the Galapagos Islands. Other than seeing, you'll see blue footed buoys and a lot of marketing um, materials, but this is a photo that, that guests always like to take. And of all the photos that our expedition team has shared, this is by far the fav my favorite photo. Um, just we've seen this uh, expedition guy driving the Zodiac and just the water and how the sky has changed and just you can see the scenery. Um, a lot of birds too are along the cliffs here. So you'll see blue footed boobies and red footed boobies. Um, the great thing too is the zodiacs. You don't even have to get off the zodiacs and the Galapagos to enjoy the wildlife. We always offer zodiac cruising throughout the day. So you'll go ashore and then we'll offer a couple zodiac cruises and then you'll go ashore again in the afternoon. So. Um, if you just want to go on Zodiacs, we'll, we'll offer that. Elizabeth Bay is like a marine sanctuary. So you'll see in the front of that Zodiac, there's a penguin there. Um, you'll see uh, sea turtles as well, um, as well as um, manta rays. And for any of you that want to see the Galapagos giant tortoises, we'll take you to Santa Cruz, where I, I, I wish I, I included this photo for my trip, but I'm 6'2". And I stood right, probably 10 feet behind one of the tortoises and I looked very tiny. They weigh, um, I think up to 500 pounds and they live well into their hundreds. So when we visit the um, Galapagos um, tortoise areas, it's unbelievable. You won't just see a couple tortoises. You're gonna see hundreds of tortoises roaming around. That's probably one of, other than snorkeling, that was one of my favorite highlights. Um, and then winding down in the evening, uh, you'll be able to take amazing photos, enjoy sunset. We'll offer sunset uh, zodiac cruises. You'll come back on board. We might offer a South America tapas and tasting evening with wine pairings from South America. You'll listen to a little lecture and then you'll go to dinner. And I could not believe how tired I was each night. I think it was just the excitement of visiting the islands, but it truly is a, a destination that is one of my favorites, Galapagos and Antarctica. I hope that really got you excited about travel. 
Um, and I'll just mention a couple other things and then I'll turn it back over to Expedia Cruises. Uh, with Silver Sea, I mentioned we include gratuities, alcohol. We do have a special going right now where if you pay in full for a trip by May 31st, you save up to 20%. So we have voyages that offer 10% on all of our cruises and then some cruises offer 20% savings. And for any um, solo travelers, Expedition is great. Uh, this isn't, uh, we should have switched out the image because this is a, a photo on our classic ship. We never have formal evenings for Expedition, but um, with the interactions with the Expedition team, the dinners are always small groups, four to six, eight guests. I always recommend um, solo travel and we have supplements as low as 25%. And any of you that are Venetian Society guests, if you bring a new Silver Sea guest with you, it doesn't have to be on the same voyage, you will uh, receive a savings and so will your friends. So this is a new program um, that is available that your Expedia advisor can share with you. And then lastly, um, we have updated our policies uh, just due to COVID cruise with confidence. Uh, with Silver Sea, you have up to 31 days prior to departure to cancel your cruise and receive 100% future cruise credit. So that's something that is really important. We have this program going through uh, 2022. And with that, I will mention, uh, we have an exclusive savings just for this event tonight. It's a two week booking window, enjoying $600 savings per suite. So if you make a booking with any of the offices that are hosting tonight's event, um, please work with them. They'll be able to apply the savings to your booking and uh, hopefully we, we generate some, some great sales here. I really hope that just got you inspired again about travel. I do hope things open up in Canada soon um, so that you can visit Antarctica maybe at the end of this year into next year. So with that, thank you. Thank you very much, Rachel. I know I'm inspired. I uh, love the destinations and can't wait to go. So we do have a few questions. Um, just have to pull them up here. Um, questions and comments. Uh, comment about your fantastic photos, and I would have to agree, the photos are amazing. Thank you. Uh, Diane asks, when is the best time of year to be there for snorkeling? Great question. Uh, I would say January through June is great for snorkeling. Uh, and because the water is a little warmer, you'll get more underwater wildlife. Um, I went in October and it was fine, but I guess it's just preferences. So maybe January through June would be a good time. Okay, great. Um, is there enough Zodiacs to cover the number of guests on the ship? Great question. Yes, so we never uh, fill our vessels completely full um, just because of singles and some guests do not want to go ashore. So with Silver, uh, probably, pardon me, Silver Origin, we have 100 guests and eight Zodiacs, and we are able to get all guests ashore in the Galapagos. Antarctica is a little different um, because we do have two vessels that are about 240 guests. So what we do, we break it up into two groups in the morning. The first group might go ashore from 9 to 1030, and the second group will go ashore from about 1030 to noon. So we are able to get everyone ashore. In between going ashore, we offer Zodiac cruises. So there's nothing that you'll miss out. I always say just with Antarctica, you want to be on a ship under 300 passengers. Okay, great. I got a private message as well in regards to the kayaks. Um, I think you mentioned there was eight to 10 kayaks. Is that correct? Um, yep. And how do people have to sign up for them or how do they work? Great question. Um, as Silver Sea includes the kayaking program, I, if you're an avid kayaker and you want to kayak every day, that's not something that we can offer because we try to allow everyone to kayak. Um, so I'd say you're probably on a 10-day Antarctica cruise kayak one to two times. Um, there's a sign-up sheet on board. So we have a couple of kayak instructors. You have to attend a class, listen to the protocols in place, um, and then from there you'll probably kayak one to two times during the voyage. All right, that's the end of the questions. I thank you everybody for uh, those great questions and comments as well. So um, I wanna thank you. Um, I, and also remind you that our team of travel consultants are here to help you. Uh, using a local travel advisor or travel consultant is more important than ever. 
uh, as a result of the pandemic, travel has become a little bit more complicated. But our, our advisors understand these complexities and work, will work hard to make your trip is as safe and as seamless as possible, along with the help of companies like this, like Silver Sea Cruises. Just a reminder, our offices are all open. We are available and in the offices, but making an appointment is important. Um, you can reach us by email or by phone. Um, and we also have this wonderful tool called Zoom. So if you would prefer to meet with your consultants via Zoom, that is even possible. Um, if you're not comfortable to come into the office, but would like to see your consultant's uh, beautiful face. Uh, we are here to answer questions. We are here booking our international travel. We're booking staycations uh, for this summer as well. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, we're booking into 2022, 2023, and some, some cruise lines have uh, itineraries out for early 2024. So now is the time to plan um, and book because um, things are filling up. Uh, people have waited and have missed travel for so long that they are ready to go as soon as it is safe to do so. So we are all here to help. Um, I wanna thank Rachel Woodward again from Silver Sea Cruises for joining us today. Um, our next travel talk will be next Thursday at seven o'clock and Scenic Luxury Cruises and Tours will be here to uh, educate us about the Mekong River and uh, Asia. So hopefully you can all join us. Thank you very much, everybody. Good night. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.